How's it going YouTube? This is UK Retro Game Addict, uh, Rich, and uh, this is finally my uh, 200 subscriber Q&A session, uh, which now I'm up to nearly 250 subscribers, so uh, yeah, I have been completely shit and not getting around to it. So anyway, here it is. Um, behind me is a little tiny glimpse of uh, my up and coming game room, which I still not quite got finished yet. Um, it's been a long time, but trust me, when it is done, it really will be worth it. I've just got to save up now for a TV, and then we're pretty much done. Right. So, um, so we're going to do a load of questions today, and then I'm going to uh, post a load of um, of gaming related goods and bads um, around the world basically that's what we're gonna do right so first question then we'll read on the side here um, this is from uh, Adam at FOT1 uh, from Sydney Australia and uh, he asks what's your favorite handheld and what's, uh, what's your favorite between the Lynx and the Game Gear right on that one then um, Probably my favourite handheld, if we're saying it as a handheld, not as an emulator. So a classic handheld is probably definitely going to have to be the PC Engine GT. Um, I had one of those back in the day and that thing is awesome. Uh, the screen was just crazily good. Um, you know, to have Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition on a handheld back in the 90s, uh, when everyone else was still rocking it out on the uh, Super Nintendo, was just just mental. So I'm going to definitely have to go with the PC Engine GT on that one. Um, favourite between the Lynx and the Game Gear? Um, I'm going to have to go Lynx, um, definitely, because I thought the, the, the screen was just a lot better, um, and it's just funny because it was just about as big as a house. So gonna go with the Lynx. Uh, favorite games for that one. Also, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really like the the screen on the Game Gear because you could barely ever see it ever. Um, so out the, yeah, and then favorite games for those. So I'm gonna say Lynx Road Blasters. So I think that's a really cool conversion. Again, never played properly on a Lynx really until a couple of months ago. Um, and yeah, still like California games for that as well. And for the Game Gear, um, used to really love Super Off-Road Racer on that. Um, really cool conversion of that. So yeah, I'm gonna go with Super Off-Road. He's also said, um, also do you think as you get more into collecting, sometimes the buzz of collecting takes over from actually playing the games? Um, I'm gonna say yes on that one. It is for me sometimes it is that I, I buy a system and uh, it's because I want it, and I just I get to the point where I want it, I want it, I want it, and I finally get it and I unpack it, and sometimes I just put it on a shelf and that's it. Don't even turn it on. Um, but then you know it's like I've got it. It's in my collection. Awesome. Um, other times, yeah, I'll play on the systems. But yeah, sometimes it is all about just having them uh, in the collection. So yes, yeah, sometimes. The buzz can take over of just having it. Uh, right then, next question is from uh, Rob Maximus RD from Canada, and he asks: um, Is there any console, handheld, or computer you're excited about getting, um, but when you actually got it, it was a bit of a disappointment? Um, that one, I'm going to say um, the Wonder Swan. Um, I was really excited about it. My friend Gav got it for me for my birthday, and it is still cool. So Gav, no offense. Um, love the Wonder Swan, but um, finally got some games for it, and they are really Japanesey. Um, there was no even slight games I could play in English. It was literally they, I bought five games for it, and everyone was impossible to play. So. Um, a bit of a disappointment on the Wonder Swan front. Um, cool name, had good credentials, but it turned out it wasn't as good as it could have been. So yes, I'm going to say the Wonder Swan. Right, next up then, uh, this is Robert, which is a non-existent human, and he's from America, and he asks, um, from the Nintendo family, which mascot um, of game they were featured in and what is your favorite and why um, Nintendo mascots Ooh, uh, they're all the kind of same um, I don't know probably either 
I like Donkey Kong, he's cool. Um, and I still like Mario as well, so yeah, probably one of those two out of that one. Uh, Sega, Nintendo, and PlayStation. Um, well, we've got Sega, I'm probably going to say, um, I don't even know his name. The. Um, oh. The Maraca game, the Lust Sombrero guy, the guy with the sombrero anyway, um, he's in a couple of games like Sega Tennis and stuff, I forget his name, so I'd say him for Sega because he's a bit quirky. SNK, um, did they really, okay, bar from loads and loads of fighting people, uh, I'm going to say the guy from Metal Slug because he was just badass. Um, and PlayStation, definitely going to have to be Parappa the Rapper. They don't get cool, come any cooler than that guy, so Parappa for, uh, the Rapper for that one. Um, he also asks, what game do you wish was released that was an unreleased title? Um, definitely going to have to say Aliens the Arcade Game. Um, absolutely love this game. Uh, really cool, um, you know, generic kind of 90s scroll along shooter kind of thing. Uh, loads of guns, loads of aliens. It was aliens, so yeah, can't go wrong really. It's about one of the only good aliens games they ever made. So definitely going to have to go with that. Uh, shame that never came out on the system, but yeah, got it on the main now. So yeah, classic game. Uh, let's see. In Sega old and new release titles, which games do you like, and do you think should be remade into future gaming? Um, I would give my uh, left arm um, to definitely see Streets of Rage remake. Um, I would think that could be genius and I don't know why they've not done it. Come on, the world is crying out for some more Streets of Rage. So Streets of Rage, yes, should be remade. That could really be just amazing. Um, he also asks, uh, most weird and obscure console game in your opinion? Uh, either something you own or not. Uh, I don't own it. I would like to play it because it looks completely mental. Uh, I'd say Bible Adventures uh, for the NES. Um, you know, you can play as like Noah's Ark and other kind of, yeah, crazy sort of um, Bible stories and you go through and you play them. It just looks completely bizarre. Um, so yeah, I'd go Bible Adventures on that one. Right, let's see what else we've got. Um, from childhood, what game was it that made you in, get into gaming? Um, I've just put a few down here that I think, you know, got, got me where I am today. Um, I said in the 90s it was a, a hell of a lot of arcade action. Um, arcades and, you know, it was Super Nintendos and it was it was Mega Drives and it was that kind of era which was literally like, for me, the pinnacle of gaming. It was just exploding and there was games just everywhere. So. Pretty much the games that kind of got me there at that sort of time definitely has to be Street Fighter 2. Um, must have spent about £6 million at the arcade on that one. Wasn't very good at it, but you know, you had to play it. Um, F Zero on the um, Super Nintendo um, definitely got me in there. Uh, things like Contra Spirits as well. Uh, we used to play hours and hours of endless Contra Spirits. Uh, Road Blasters on the arcade, again, one of my favourite games. That is just a classic arcade game. Uh, Turtles the arcade game, just again, just smashed that at the arcade. Used to love playing that. Um, Mortal Kombat, as again, you know, that was a, a classic. Uh, Double Dragon, as well, um, used to love that. So, yeah, there, there's been loads of really great games. Uh, there's a few more I'll list in a bit that, again, from my sort of childhood that got me where I am today, um, that I've just really, really enjoyed playing. Uh, at the arcades. Again, love the 90s. The 90s was just the greatest time at the arcade. Right, let's see what else we got. What type of game do you like and styles of game do you like? Um, I'm really big into shoot 'em ups. Um, again, I love crazy Japanese bullet hell ones where you physically can't move on screen and you're just having to dodge through six million bullets. Love those ones and um, sideways scrolling beat 'em ups. Um, you just can't go wrong really at the end of the day. Um, again, it's a shame that everything is all 3D fighting now. It'd be really cool if someone would um, release a sort of classic styled um, 90s scrolling beat em up, would be amazing. Um, right, let's see what else. What is something you wish was released in the UK that wasn't? Um, apart from, yeah, there's a lot of consoles and stuff that. 
we missed out on here in the UK. Um, <clears throat> you know, things that the you know Japanese market got hold of. Um, so I'm definitely going to say, um, yeah, the mental load of uh, Sega Saturn shooters that we missed out over here, and you know the American market missed out as well. So many great games came out for that system that no one got to see the light of day. Um, which, again, if that sort of, you know, if all those sort of games had come out with the system, um, it, it should have lasted longer than it did. It, it was cut down in its prime, which is a real shame because it's such a cool system. And some of the, you know, the the graphic effects on that system just still today just look really cool. So um, I definitely say that. Um, a game I would really like to have played was or got over here was uh, Mighty Final Fight. If anyone's ever seen that, um, it's a little uh, sort of like cutesy Japanese Final Fight game where on the NES and you get like little tiny like Mike Hagar. So he's going along. So check that out on YouTube somewhere. Go and find my, uh, Mighty Final Fight. Looks a funny, crazy game. So yeah, I would have liked to have seen that as well. Um, rarest game in my collection. Um, I don't. I, you know what, I probably got a few gems in here that I don't even know about. Um, so I'm probably going to say um, I've got a, a sealed uh, up version of Pullstar on the Neo Geo CD. Um, again, never been opened. So I'm going to say that that's going to be pretty rare. Um, uh, I'm trying to think. Yeah, I've got a few bits I'm sure that are just hidden away in here that could be worth, you know, a bit of cash um, that I don't know about. But. I'm not selling them, I'm keeping them. So um, yeah, I'm sure there are a few gems hidden away. Um, he also asked, do you own any homebrew games? Uh, the only homebrew ones I've got are on my Vectrex, which is on my multi-cart, um, which came with all the homebrew games. Apart from that, I don't own any homebrew at all. Um, let's see what else he's put. <clears throat> he's also put, favorite games from different generations. Um, I've gone quickly I've done three titles from the 80s three from the 90s and three from the noughties from the arcades so I'm just gonna go for it um, 80s then I'm definitely gonna have to say Space Invaders start it all off so that's got to be in there uh, Burger Time again used to love that on the arcade and a Carrier Warriors um, just you know groundbreaking at its time <clears throat> right 90s uh, again, Road Blasters, um, used to love it, couldn't get enough of it. Simpsons Arcade Game, again, that kind of style of game, when it came along, just blew everything out of the water. Uh, and Smash TV as well, wicked game on the arcade, so yeah, that was cool. And the noughties, uh, I'm definitely going to say, um, let's go make some crazy money, uh, with Crazy Taxi. Um, can't get enough of Crazy Taxi. I'm completely useless at it, but it's something that that and the Offspring soundtrack that just keep you coming back for more. So I love that. Um, Silent Scope, um, again, one of my favourite games. Nothing like that had ever come out before, and I think that's a that's a really cool game. So really like Silent Scope. Um, Sega at the time were just their arcade games were just unstoppable. Really, cool, some good stuff in the in the noughties from them. Um, and Star Wars Arcade as well. Um, again, you know some. Some wicked stuff from them. So those three. Everyone's probably going to say yes, they were probably from 1999 or something. So yes, they probably were, but I'm going to say naughty, so I'm going to cover my back on that one. So around about the 1999-ish sort of era. Right. Uh, next up then, question from It's Dan's. Uh, Dan from Liverpool in England. Uh, he's saying, a gaming regret. Have you ever seen anything cheap? Thought you'd leave it and go back. Uh, and later you realise what it is. Um, da, da, da. Or was there something you've sold in the past that you've regretted? Um, the leaving something and going back is probably something I do uh, fairly, fairly, you know, I do quite a lot of times. I either see something maybe on eBay or say I go to a car boot sale or something like that. I'll see something and I'll be like, hmm, I'll think about it and I'll, you know, I'll come back to it and then I come back and of course it's always gone. Um, and yeah, I always regret it and then kick myself for the next couple of hours being pissed off that I missed something that I should have just instantly bought, you know. Um, and then yeah, my biggest gaming regret is probably going to be um, selling my Neo Geo and my PC Engine um, back in the 90s is, is probably going to be my big gaming regrets. Uh, I, I should never have done that um, to both those systems, uh, I said I, especially the PC Engine. 
Um, I sold my GT and my Duo and a severe amount of games, some very, very, very hard titles to come by at the time. Um, I did have an epic collection with those and I sold the lot to buy the Neo Geo, which I should never have done. And then I sold the Neo Geo uh, after that. So yeah, basically that was a that was probably my biggest gaming regret. Um, I said if I had those now, then yeah, I really would have a severely kick-ass uh, collection of PC Engine stuff. So yeah, I'm going to say out of the two, the PC Engine was the biggest mistake out of all of them. Uh, right, next up then is Hindle Yak Dan from Wigan in England. Um, he says, "How did the P? Sorry, the Sony PSP salad taste? Um, very good. Yes, <laughs> actually, did look quite tasty. Uh, so, if you've not seen that, yes, I Steve uh, twenty eight Steve Ryan sent me a uh, knackered PSP that he's been uh, blowing up um, in the post, and uh, I decided to fry it up and make it into a nice uh, little tasty salad there." Um, he also says, do you plan to cook any other game peripherals? I would like to do a little demonstration stroke experiment sometime. I think it could be possible. Um, it's something I've seen done in China. This is a crazy and quite nasty thing. Um, what they do is they get a fish and they cut the fish while it's still alive down the side of, its, uh, down the, side of the fish. Then they batter it, they deep fry it. Uh, but not the head bit and then he, they have to serve the fish to the table while the fish is still alive um, so the fish has to still be alive when it gets to the table even though it's been hacked apart and deep fried so completely awful um, so I'd like to do the same with a Game Boy I'd like to or some sort of handheld I'd like to get uh, say a Game Boy um, put the game in turn it on put the speaker up to full um, and I would like to batter it and sort of deep fry it and I think if you were quick enough and you did it in the right way you could get it, you could batter it, fry it and then take it out and the Game Boy is still to be working um, I'm actually pretty confident I can pull this off and I probably am going to try it when I get a when I get a, a really knackered up Game Boy that I find somewhere I will, uh, I will try that um, so that's what I'm going to do with that one so again, thanks for your question on that one. Dan, right. Uh, old school NYC gamer, Sid, from New York City. Right, he asks, what is the weirdest arcade story you can share with us? Now, Sid, this is the dip most difficult question <laughs> anyone's actually asked me. I don't really have any mega weird, um, uh, weird sort of events that actually happened in an arcade in the 90s, really. Um... There's some a lot of weird people there. I'm definitely going to say that. Um, yeah, they were, they, it was uh, it's a seedy, seedy underworld uh, arcades back then. Um, I can tell you some you know crazy things that happened. I've seen um, what have I done? I was trying to say I've seen it was, it was always the back in the the 90s when it was uh, people you know you got something like Mortal Kombat had come out and it just come out and people were just going crazy for it and you. Uh, they were literally someone had like a new special move, so you got like a um, I don't know a new Sub Zero move that nobody knew, and everyone was always putting their jackets over their uh, or like a jumper or something over their hands, so literally you couldn't see couldn't see what how they you know how they were literally moving uh, their hands or the button combinations because that was it you know there was no real instructions on these machines, so it was always like you know someone would work out how to um, you know do a special move. And you know it, you know it was a secret for a while until everyone else found it out. Um, also, one of the other craziest things I've done is um, on a um, a, day, a Daytona arcade machine. Um, I was playing on this thing, getting really, really into it, <clears throat> and um, and literally, literally like turned in, turned in hard left, and snapped the steering wheel. The steering wheel completely just came off in my hand so literally it was like what the hell am I going to do with this so <laughs> so I had to just sort of like try and sort of prized it back in a little bit and um, basically just sort of ran out the arcade fairly quickly so yeah I did break a Daytona arcade machine once as well um, so that's really about all the weird sort of slightly funny stories I can tell you said so, sorry dude if I said if, if there's anything else I could have come up with I would have done but that's a hard question right moving on then 
Uh, 28 Steve Ryan from Blackpool in England. Uh, what classic game do you want to see either re-released or remade on a newer system? Um, again, I'm going to say anything like Streets of Rage again, um, you know, Sunset Riders, something like that. Um, that kind of thing I, I would really love to see made again. Um, I'd like to see someone also do something like Speedball 2 or something like that. That could be cool. If it was redone properly, that could be a really good game. Um, so that they're probably the kind of that sort of that sort of game I'd definitely like to see done again. Or Xenon 2. Xenon 2. If they did like Xenon 3 and made it like a real crazy bullet hell thing, that could be such a good game. So someone should do that. Bitmap Brothers, get back on it. Come on. Um, right. Uh, Chris, Wicked Clown NZ from New Zealand. Uh, what is the worst gaming purchase I've ever made? I'm definitely going to have to say the Amstrad GX4000. Um, so if, if you don't know what this is, this is a, um, a console made by Amstrad um, by a guy here in England, um, Sir Alan Sugar, or Lord Sugar now, who uh, hosts the Apprentice uh, program here in the UK. Um, a freaking horrible console really is bad um, yeah not the games are hideous the graphics are bad just a bad time he was just trying to get on the bandwagon of the Mega Drive etc and it just it just screwed up really badly um, so yeah these things I remember within a couple of months um, they went from like a hundred pounds start off and then they were down to like 10 pounds you could buy one a hot you know brand new one for 10 pounds so a lot of them you see um have literally never been played or they've been played like once or twice so they're always pretty mint in the box um, and i already had one but this one um i actually got this from you know, like a car boot sale the other week boxed up for a quid so one pound so yeah about one dollar fifty um which is crazy bargain because i said they they are they are actually gaining quite a lot of value at the minute, and so they're going up to about uh, about thirty odd quid now uh, to buy one. So that was a cool bargain. So yeah, Amstrad the GX four thousand. Step into my office because you're fucking fired. Uh, <laughs> horrible machine. Right. Next up, then, uh, Hygiene seventy six. Um, right. If you could spray any old console, what color would it be? Um, just for kicks, I think I'd like to get a uh, Sega Mega Drive and spray it um, Nez Grey would be quite funny. Um, but if I could actually do one, I would probably say um, I would get a Sega Saturn and I would spray it Candy Apple Red. So like a candy effect, really deep sheen on it. Uh, I think that thing would absolutely look the balls. It really could be cool. So yeah, if I could do anything, that's probably what I would do. Uh, right, next up is a question from Rhodesy71, uh, Paul from Dewsbury in England. Um, he says, uh, what got you into video games, at what age and what was your first system? Um, got me into video games was probably the fact that we had a computer, we had like a couple of computers when we were kids. Um, we had like this, yeah, the Oric One, which died after about six months. That was like really early 80s. And then, like, uh, midway through, we had a Commodore 64. Um, and it was just, we were just in the, we were at school at the time, and it was, everyone was into video games. It was, that was the thing. Just everyone did it. So it was just a part of, part of growing up. And, you know, we used to go on holiday with our grandparents down um, in Weymouth every summer. And we would just we would go to the arcades every day uh, for about four or five hours, and we would we would just tear it up for about a month at a time. So you know, it was video games was just part of everything. So um, I mean, I said we got into I can you know I've been I've been gaming. So I can think, I can remember playing my first game of Space Invaders about. On the arcade, I think I was probably about six or seven. It's probably about six, and then yeah, the again the Oric was probably we were about about five-ish or six. So probably from about five-ish, I've been into gaming. Um, and yeah, whenever I can get my hands on some, I'm there. Um, and my first system, um, my first actually going consoles now. My first handheld was a Game Boy. 
Um, again, wanted one for ages. Took me a long while to get hold of one, so Game Boy was my first. And uh, my first console was the Mega Drive. So, um, again, I had <laughs> several of them. I used to chip and change consoles and machines all the time. So I'd buy one, I'd have it for a month or so, I'd sell it. I'd buy a Super Nintendo, I'd go Super Nintendo for a couple of months, I'd go back to Mega Drive and so on and so forth. So done a lot a lot of chipping and changing the machines over the years, but now definitely, you know, trying to get them all back again. That is my aim to get every system that I had as a kid and I'm gonna get them all back. And that's it. Um, plus a few more, you know, that I can uh, bring along the way. Um right. Let's see what this goes. Um follow follow fifty three Gavin from Fort William, England asks uh, what is your favourite video game controller in the world and why? Right, a couple that I like. Uh, I like the FM Towns Marty because it's really diddy. Simplistic, curvaceous, cool. So I like that. That's a really cool controller. Um, I also really like the Neo Geo CD controller. Just for the, the sort of D-pad is really good. Um, such a comfortable controller and just really solidly built. So that... Is a wicked, wicked system controller um, and a crazy peripheral. This is this thing's freaking awesome. Got this at the weekend. Ugh. Yeah, <laughs> this is my Xbox um, Silent Scope. I can't even get it in. It's so big. So my Xbox Silent Scope um, gun, which I've not tried it yet. Um, I'm probably going to do a review on it. So at the minute, this is definitely. With pump action, uh, my favourite sort of add-on peripheral. So yeah, my Silent Scope Xbox gun. So that thing's just brutal, really cool. Uh, right, next up then, uh, Darren Walsh Sock, Darren from Leicester. Um, he asks if we could make one Sega Mega Drive game remade, what would it be? Um, right, let's have a look up at the Mega Drive collection up here. What would I remake? Uh, oh, that's it. Found it. Cyborg Justice. <laughs> um, completely crazy game, um, but quite playable in a crap way. So yes, remake Cyborg Justice. That would be just completely off the hook if it was done. Um, next up then, FGV112, um, Joe from Ireland. Uh, what's the worst game you've ever played? Um, a couple of games that I really don't like to play. I really don't enjoy RPGs, I'm afraid. I really don't enjoy Pokemon games. So Steve Ryan, I just pissed on your chips there. Um, other things that I hate. Um, uh, nothing's really coming to mind at the minute. Just those things like Zelda or something just drive me bonkers. I, I just can't deal with them. Uh, I've got a short attention span. Uh, I need action basically and anything um, lot, you know just very slow going I, I can't do it some like animal crossing bleh. so no something like those um, right what else we got here okay custom grinds rough uh, Ryan from Suffolk England um, when did you start uh, start gaming and game collecting um, Again, gaming probably from around about five-ish. Uh, Mega got into it probably around about the age of 12 and 13. And uh, when did I properly start collecting? I've been collecting now for one year um, properly. I've always had games consoles, but this is now actually really got into it. Um, and when you actually see how much I've collected in a year, it's quite scary, um, to be honest. I've really got to slow down because I've just bought way, way, way too much stuff. So yeah, when I finally do my games room tour, you'll see in one year how much stuff I've got. It's a lot. Right, next up then. Um, ooh, my favorite game of all time. Um, if I could probably pick one game, if I had one game or one machine that I could play probably forever, um, it probably would be Road Blasters. Um, just that's my happy place game. If the world is shit, um, put Road Blasters on my arcade machine and I'm a happy boy. So, yeah, I'd probably say Road Blasters on that one. Uh, right, next up then. Uh, last one, actually. Uh, three August Ones, Dave from England. Uh, if you're on a desert island um, and you only could take one handhold console, uh, what would it be? Um, 
If we're going with the original handhelds, um, I'm definitely going to say the, the PC Engine GT again. Some Just some great games on there, some awesome shooters and stuff, which I absolutely love. Um, but yeah, you will need a, um, a generator or a shitload of batteries, because uh, that probably really can drink them. Um, and if I could have something from today, I would probably take some sort of emulator, something like a dingo or um, a canoe, something like that, um, that I could run basically, you know, everything on, all the MAME and everything like that, and all the emulators of all the systems. So that's probably what I would take. Right, so that is all the, uh, the questions, half an hour later. <laughs> um, but anyway, I just want to say a real big thank you to everyone um, who has watched my channel, subscribed to my channel, um, and hopefully has enjoyed some videos. Um, again, I'm, I'm really enjoying it here on YouTube. It's, it's an, so far, I've met some cool people. Um, I'm going to be doing some big things in a couple of months um, in the gaming community, which hopefully in about a month's time I'm going to be able to, or not even a month, hopefully in a few weeks' time I'm going to be telling you about, um, which you can get involved in, uh, which is going to be seriously going to be really good. So, again, just want to say a big thank you to everyone, and uh, again, there's going to be some uh, crazy free, free stuff um, coming around the world to you um, in the next sort of week or two. Um, might not get time to post it out uh, for a couple of days, but uh, said it's on its way. So again, this is me, Rich, UK Retro Game Addict. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you soon with some more reviews. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. <laughs>